You're listening to the Styling Advisory Podcast, the only show exploring the business of personal styling and how stylists are helping retailers to personalize customer experiences. We're interested in how styling leaders have built a successful business and what retailers are doing to capitalize on the styling client community. If you're a personal stylist currently avoiding doing the marketing activity on your to-do list today, schedule your tea and chat with founder and host Sarah Cohen via the website. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Styling Advisory Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Cohen. I probably introduced that in the intro, so now you know it twice. Today, it's just me. I'm not interviewing anyone because I have this massive list of questions that stylists ask me all the time when it comes to marketing and and business sales, websites, emails, PR, and I thought, why don't I start answering them? And being able to do this on the podcast, I can drill down into a bit more detail for you. So I'm going to use the questions verbatim, and we're going to kick off this series with a question which was, Facebook groups seem complicated, should I be bothered doing one? Now, I thought to help you all in the easiest, clearest possible way, I'm going to break down my answer into four kind of categories. Number one, are Facebook groups necessary? Number two, do I actually need one? Number three, how or why is it different to a Facebook business page? And number four, can I be bothered? So let me begin with question number one. Are they necessary? Now, I've written some notes because as you all know, I can go off on a tangent and then potentially not answer the question and you're all sitting there hanging, waiting for the answer. So let me begin by saying that nothing is necessary. Okay, there will always be so many powerful, exciting ways to find clients, to build your audience, to convert them. Some stylists I've seen have had success through ads. Others have had success through running social media challenges. Others have really found that PR and guest um, posting, whether it's on online publications or being on other podcasts has been amazing. Others do loads of free webinars and events or speak at events. Others find Instagram reels just easily convert or IGTV back in the day. Others have found TikTok has been a really amazing way to build their audience with a particular niche. Others have found Pinterest. One of my clients the other day said that she gets um, over 3 million views on her Pinterest account every month, which was extraordinary. And some find success with Facebook groups. It's a preference. It's also a matter of what you're using it for. So that's the first part of my answer. I'm going to drill down a little bit more. Do I need one? Do I need a Facebook group? No, you technically don't need one, but I thought I would explain why I like them, why I use them. For lots of you, you might be part of um, the Styling Advisory Committee, which is a Facebook group of personal stylists from all around the world which is a fantastic way for me to learn more about all of you and to build relationships and to share useful resources. But what am I going to say here? Okay, the reason I like it, number one, it's a place to get to know your audience and build relationships in a two-way dynamic environment. So you know when you're posting on Facebook or Instagram, TikTok, yada, 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 or even when you're emailing someone, if you're emailing your list, it's you talking, it's you talking at people. And yeah, you can use polls and you can ask questions, and, and, but at the end of the day, it's a little bit more advertorial. You're building awareness, you're letting people know about your services, of course, but it's, I feel like it's very one way. But in a group, in a Facebook group, I see that there is this elevated level of communication and conversation. So its purpose is to build relationships. Someone discovers your website, maybe they searched for stylists in your local area on Google, or they saw a blog post um, because, you know, they were searching for something like um, best shoe brands for wide feet. And you have a blog post on your website talking about your favorite brands for wide feet. Um, Or maybe they saw a reel, you know, they discovered you, someone shared a post that you'd done, but in any sense, they become aware of you. And what they'll do is probably start following one of your pages, or they might jump onto your website. Great stuff. But in a Facebook group, that's where you can start to get to know them a whole lot more. 
it's what we sort of think about as the next stage in the customer journey from awareness, they become aware of you, you know, they've, they've arrived on your website or they've read something you've created. Then we move them into that consideration phase, which is giving them the information, making them feel something, building that trust so they do move towards a booking with you. What else do I want to say? Yeah, it's how we learn about them too. You know, when you're when you have a Facebook group, there is a lot more readiness and openness to having conversations. So I find that I might post something on my Instagram page, let's say the Styling Advisory Instagram page, and it's really just me saying, "Hey guys, this is what's happening." But then in the Facebook group, that's where we can start to ask more detailed questions and chat about, you know, marketing and business challenges or We'll have stylists that jump on the Facebook group and say, I've got a client, she's curvy, but she only wants to wear a designer and I'm in the UK, help who has some brand recommendations. Things like that that start to build a sense of connection and community. The other thing is it becomes this connector. The Facebook group has kind of two purposes. For you, from a business perspective, you can cultivate relationships. But the other amazing part is that Others connect with each other through your group, and that is incredibly powerful. It's that community vibe. So I must say, I am pretty immune to, I think, most sales funnels. You know, being a marketer, I'm aware of the different strategies and messaging. But I am a member of a community which, no judgment, is all about like reading tarot and trying to communicate with ghosts. And as sort of esoteric and out of left field as that may sound, In their Facebook group, I feel a sense of safety and like I'm seen and I feel comfortable talking about stuff that I have been explicitly instructed not to bring up. I bring it up all the time. It's that idea that someone has created a space for people with a specific interest or a specific need or a specific experience to connect. And if you can facilitate that for your community, it's a very powerful thing. I would buy a hacky sack filled with the hair of a sheep's gonad if this particular Facebook group told me to. That is the level of trust and connection and belief I have. So in my opinion, I think they are incredible if you can be bothered to do them right. Okay, next one. How is it different to a Facebook business page? Okay, and this is how I wanted to kind of picture it for you or or, or create a picture. The Facebook business page is like the signage outside of a cafe saying, this is my cafe. These are the opening hours. Come inside or what have you. It's that advertorial front. So you could also say that the cafe window is also like the Facebook business page. But the Facebook group is what's happening inside the cafe. That's where people are sipping coffee and chatting and reading and connecting and spending money in your business. That's that connection point. And if we can get them from outside your cafe to inside your cafe, they are more likely, in this analogy, to then buy something. So for from a styling perspective, if we can get them not only aware of your business, but we can then get them chatting with you and other people that have worked with you and people that also have similar challenges. Maybe they're petite or maybe they're um, groups of people that really focused on sustainability and reinventing what you've already got. If we can do that, you are positioning yourself in a stronger way to convert those people into clients over time. Last question, can I be bothered? This is a really important question. I, I laugh, but it, you, we, we want to really think about this. First thing I would say is, have you found success in your other marketing activities? You know, if you are already finding you've got some great traction with the content that you're posting on social media platforms, or if you're finding that your lead magnet is working really well and you're growing your subscriber list and those subscribers are highly engaged with your email marketing and they're booking in with you, I would say, you know, you're doing stuff that's great. It's already working. But if you are looking to find out a little bit more about your, you know, ideal client or do some market research, or if you're planning on launching some sort of 
one to many product like a course or a program where you need a large pool of engaged potential customers to convert. I would suggest that the first question you start with instead of can I be bothered is what is my commercial goal? And this is something that I kind of, I always bring people back to. What do you want to achieve? When I ask this question to stylists, most of them will just provide me with a number. You know, I want to, I want to um, generate $100,000 in revenue next year which is great. It's really good to have that figure because what we can do then is we can work out, okay, well, what are the services that you're offering? What's the average price? Therefore, how many clients would we need to book in a year to meet that sales figure, to meet that target? I would encourage you to start there, but once you've figured out the figure, you know, your sales target, we need to also consider how you're going to be happy to do this day in and day out. So a lot of stylists I know, particularly over the last couple of years, took the pandemic and the opportunity to pivot into virtual services as a way of kind of moving out of the one-on-ones. I spoke with a stylist the other day who is just very exhausted, energetically exhausted from doing long shopping trips, you know, and also the energy it takes to hold space for the client particularly if that client is really struggling with insecurities and their self-image. And she knew that for her own work-life balance and her own sort of mental health, she wanted to restructure her business to offer different services that didn't require her to be so connected to it's me serving you in person or I don't earn any money. I think we need to also consider what you're happy to do, what makes you inspired, you know, what you would love to spend your days doing. Because often when I ask stylists this question, they'll say, you know, there's certain services they love. Let's say I love doing a colour analysis, virtual colour analysis or in person. Um, Or some will say, no, for me, it's wardrobes. I just love going into a client's wardrobe and going through it, pulling out um, the pieces that work, creating outfit ideas, but then the shopping is not really of interest to them. So we need to work out what your goal is, what your financial goals are, and then how we are going to facilitate that from a service perspective. Then we consider the best way to market them and what is the strategy that we want to follow. If you were trying to attract clients for a very high ticket, one-on-one coaching transformational program that's maybe delivered over six to 12 weeks, Um, we would require a different marketing strategy to attract that type of client compared with whether you were a stylist that wanted to launch a $9.99 a month um, stylist membership where you're creating general content for a, a larger volume of people. Then we ask the question, can you be committed to running a Facebook group to make it successful? So, And this is just, this is so important. A Facebook group is great um, when you want to sell a lot of something. Look, it's great for many, honestly, you could use it for any one of your goals. But if you know that you are someone that gets distracted really easily or you lose momentum or you just cannot be bothered, the Facebook group isn't going to run itself. The Facebook group is not going to be successful just by you setting it up and checking in once a week, you know, or, or once every couple of weeks. It's not like an indoor plant that will hopefully survive regardless of what you do. It really requires that dedication and love and care. Honestly, it's like a pet. It's like a living thing, like a pet. Because what I have observed, the stylists that put their heart and soul into the Facebook group, even though it's free, are the ones that build the most engaged audiences from which they can then launch their services really effectively. So it can be your most powerful client acquisition channel, meaning it can be the best source of clients or members or students, but you really need to take care of it. And that becomes the question if we circle back, is it worth having a Facebook group? It is if you're going to keep it alive. If you're going to let it thrive, rather, I keep my plants alive. They look dead, but they are alive and I do nothing for them. So you have to make sure that you are almost excited, you know, checking in every day, 
talking to everyone, providing interesting resources, really making an effort. Because when you do, it is it, it genuinely you reap what you sow. You get back what you put in. So I guess in summary, yes, it is. It's an amazing tool. It's an amazing um, strategy if you are going to give it the love and care that it needs to thrive. <laughs> Sounds like a gardening podcast now. But do you know what I've just realised? I didn't even answer the question, which is not surprising. Facebook groups seem complicated. To be fair, not really a question, more of a statement. But, yeah, they kind of can be. I mean, they're, they're not complicated in the sense that you create a Facebook group on Facebook, you select whether you want it to be public or private, you know, you get the opportunity to select whether you want anyone to be able to join or whether you want to approve people, um, or whether you want them to ask a series of qualifying questions to make sure that they're going to be a, a valued member of the group. And then you just log on every day and connect with them like you're building friendships. So it's not complicated in its setup. It's not complicated in its management but it is, it is another, it's something on your to-do list every day. Now, having said that, if you decided, do you know what, Barbara, I'm going to launch a Facebook group and it is going to be the best goddamn Facebook group anyone's ever been a part of. And you focused on that rather than maybe another marketing initiative that you're not really seeing traction on. Great. You know, it's not a matter of having to do everything because we simply, we simply cannot, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mum. I've got two young kids. My family's in Sydney. Um, so my husband and I work. And today they had some sports thing on. I had no idea we were supposed to donate a perishable food or a toy or something. And I just had no idea and gave them, you know, I think it was a tin of coconut milk or something. I can't be the best at everything all the time. And this is the same with the marketing stuff. I know it can be overwhelming, so we want to find simple, effective strategies that you understand, you understand what you're doing and why it's going to be beneficial long term, and then we just want to do our best knowing that there are going to be days, like last week when we had to do the head lice treatment uh, because that went through the school, there's going to be days when you just simply can't. So a Facebook group, again, I don't know why I went into head lice. I'm so sorry, everyone. Facebook groups, they do seem complicated. I wonder whether that comment comes from a place of it seems complicated because it's just another moving part I have to manage and work out strategically how to make it work. And if that's the case, I would say think about, at the end of the day, think about what you're trying to achieve. Think about the best way or the most enjoyable way of getting to that destination, that $100,000, or, you know, I just want to find 10 clients this year and really finesse my um, six-week transformational program. You know, I really want to refine my skills, whatever it is. And then we can figure out, would a Facebook group help you achieve that goal? Or do we need another type of strategy that's going to work better I hope that has actually helped and not made things more complicated. If you have other questions you'd like me to answer on the podcast, send them through. Jump on the Styling Advisory Committee, our Facebook page, and you can share your questions there. You can email info at stylingadvisory.com.au. You could send me a handwritten note via courier pigeon, whatever makes you feel connected. It doesn't matter to me. Just let me know the questions that you've been dying to ask. And they don't have to sound fancy and strategic. It could be, I friggin' hate emails. Do I have to do one? And I'll answer it. But I hope this has been helpful. And I will see you soon. Bye, guys. You've been listening to the Styling Advisory Podcast with Sarah Cohen. If you're enjoying the vibe, you can join our community of styling experts at The Styling Advisory on Instagram and Facebook, and you can watch these interviews on our YouTube channel, Styling Advisory TV. Please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to our show so Sarah can spend more time on the mic.